Welcome, everyone, to this uh, webinar on innovation and creative thinking. And thank you to the Poland team, the PwC Academy there, that actually uh, got everything uh, going. And, and, and we're trying to build momentum for the new mini MBA classes we have this year. But I think it's, uh, it's a great idea for those of you who really want to find out more about how to be innovative and, and how to actually uh, be more creative. And we all need to be creative, as I'll be trying to say uh, throughout this session. I consider myself an innovator. I've done a few things which I may actually talk about throughout uh, the uh, the discussion today or maybe the lecture because it is a, a webinar slash lecture mostly I'm trying to I'll try to cover uh, lots of ground in about an hour so feel free uh, of course to give us your feedback even uh, of course after the session so we can get better and also uh, offer you more of these uh, one hour webinars which I think are quite stimulating so I'm sure you know a few things about me all of you will probably receive my uh, a copy of my book that's that's the treat we have and I hope you enjoy it so let's move on very quickly the overall aims of today is actually I want to make you understand the uh, you know what innovation is and, and how it important it is for companies as you will see coming up um, uh, it, it, if, if companies don't innovate they are they, they are actually doomed it, it's it's very simple and even though this sounds very harsh and I, I try always to say that in business it is always the 80 20 principle whatever I tell you is not a hundred percent correct of course no one can say uh, that they're a hundred percent correct but the Please try to understand that you know in most cases if companies don't have any ideas don't get anything new uh, unless there's a monopoly they are they, they will probably end up failing at some point and I have some examples for you so we're also going to understand the obstacles I know many of you they say I, I have ideas but I'm not you know getting them done or you know I don't have the time or there's a lot of obstacles uh, that don't help us change and innovate the third point is how to be more innovative and, and of course I'll give you the theories behind that and I'll try to be as pl practical as possible well, one thing that we do at PwC, and I, I think we're quite proud of that, is that we have practitioners. Uh, you know, when, whenever we try to deliver, we, we try to give you some sort of you know foundational theory, but also be very practical. You know, we're, we're professionals. Uh, I'm also an entrepreneur myself, so you know, every everything everything uh, that, that 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 I will be saying is is quite practical because I I do these things. I don't just teach them. So uh, also uh, we'll understand where innovation can come from, and as a it, it's an interesting point there because it can come from anywhere and anyone. I want to give you some examples on that, and of course to get to the to 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 to, to the real, let's say quest is to how to how to be really creative how to how to think and I think I'll, I'll, I will go over three models if I have the time I think I will have the time I'll be a bit I'll try to be fast I know you're listening and you can just take your notes whatever I'll be happy to answer some questions I'll try to do that after like 20 30 minutes just to give you some background first unless you want to to of course uh, stop me I, I'll be happy to if, if you want to interrupt me that's fine as well and I have three models for you so let's move on and let me just tell you uh, let me ask you one quick question do you feel innovation is important? And every time I ask this question, people say, yeah, it is important. You know, I'm quite sure it is. No one says no. Like 95 or 100% of the other time, everyone says it is. So go to the next question then. Is there always a way to develop your organization? And this, this is Jeff Bezos, of course, who's done that very successfully through Amazon. And the answer, of course, that everyone says, yeah, Dito, I'm sure we can develop. The same thing happens with people. People get better. Companies get better. Uh, many, everyone can probably, you know, benefit and get better. Uh, so that's another yes on, on, this, on this question. And then the third question comes in and says, are you innovating enough? And, and the answer here, you know, I'm giving you the stats from my classes in the past 20 years, is that, yeah, we're probably not innovating enough. And the answer is, uh, you know, we have obstacles because we are not we're not innovating enough and that has to do with a lot of reasons now I'm not going to go over the theories of all the reasons but just practical reasons are coming up in a slide later on that have to do with culture time management uh, but it's not really money in the old days if you wanted to innovate you know we had to oh I have no budget <laughs> If, if I had money, I would have done this. If I only had a million dollars, okay. That's not the point. You know, there, there, there's companies like Zappos. I'm sure you've heard of Zappos. If you haven't, you know, take a note and, and, and search for them on, on, on Google. Uh, Zappos is one of the most innovating companies and they have like simple things. For example, they put a balloon uh, on, on, on every newcomer's desk. And you know, someone hears that, okay, so what? That helps the orientation and the onboarding process. Now, how, how simple is that? It's very simple. People, people see that desk with the balloon and people walk by and say, hey, hi, I'm Dino. Uh, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And I'll, you know I, I work in this area, whatever. You know, they go out for coffee for 30 days. 
Now, that's a very simple thing to do. It's not the iPad as an innovative, let's say, gadget, but it's very innovative for the company. So another point I want to make, if you are taking some notes, is that it doesn't have to be an iPad. Innovation is not about gadgets only. Innovation is about, uh, is, is about something that works overall. I have a definition coming. So overall, up to now, I'm just trying to tell you that, yes, many people say that innovation is very, very important, but they end up saying that, actually, yeah, you're right, we're not innovating enough. And there's reasons for that. I'll cover those coming up. Let's go further. And I want to tell you, uh, you know, the, the, the reason why we should innovate. I want to convince you that if you don't innovate, even as people, personal person, you know, as, as a person, as individuals, not only companies, you probably end up failing. So basically, this is like recent thinking. This, I think, is from Michael Porter about 10 years ago, eight years ago. He said, no company can have a sustainable competitive advantage forever because everything can be copied. That's an amazing quote. And everyone knows what, you know, what copies, copying is all about because everyone is kind of copying you know, Google and ideas and benchmarking. We call it benchmarking sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with that if you kind of copy some part of an idea but take it further. Uh, in, in entrepreneurship, they say, you know, if you want to become an entrepreneur or you know, because entrepreneurs try to innovate a lot and take risks, you can either take something that is already done and, and do it better or do something totally, you know, innovative, something that's never been done. So uh, it could be, it, it could be, you know, you, you can go either way, but in both cases, you can become an innovator. And in both cases, you can become an intrapreneur in your company, which means that you're doing entrepreneurship from the inside from, because you work for a company. So because everything can be copied, and we've seen that everywhere, you know, copy a gadget or copy a phone or the iPad has been copied in, in a number of, of tablets around the world. Uh, you know, cars are copying each other. So because of that, the only advantage is the ability to learn and change, learn and change learn all the time and trying to find something new. So I think, you know, if you think about this, you, you will be convinced slowly if you see and you give and, and I give you all these examples. So let me just let, let, me, let me try to give you some examples. I mean, all of you know, these companies, you know, MySpace, that was a, that was the YouTube uh, of, of, of the era. I'm 50 years old and I, and I remember MySpace. It was the first video uh, place. I also play music, by the way. I, I have a rock group and, you know, we wanted to go on MySpace and everything. And uh, then, you know, remember BlackBerry? BlackBerry had the best, the best phone, the best secure email system. Uh, Kodak was the number one film and, you know, filmmaker and photography company. Polaroid, similarly, uh, they had the instant photo, which was amazing at the time. Sony Ericsson phones, Motorola phones and Carta, which was the Wikipedia, the first one actually that tried to come out through Microsoft, didn't make it. And of course, Nokia, uh, we all know where, where Nokia is right now. It's, it's, it's fading a bit. And I know some of you will probably say, well, Dino, you're not right. They're coming back with the old models. We, we know that, but you know, they're not where they used to be because they didn't innovate as much. And Atari, of course, which was sold, it was one of the most the top games. So overall, these, these companies were the very big brand names. Everyone knows them. And of course, of course, they are considered that they failed for different reasons. And I'm not going to study the reasons, but a lot of the reasons had to do with no real innovation. Uh, nothing totally really new about it. You know, you have to continue to get there. I just wrote a uh, an article today, and I actually sent it to Poland about an hour ago. It's one of my bite-sized thoughts, and I could probably tell you to read it. You'll probably see it on social media, is that the important thing is and, and is, is to be sustainable in business and in life. It's not it's not it's not good to just have let's say one big hit. You know when you're when you're a group or, or a singer, you must have lots of hits. So basically, sustainability, financial or any type of sustainability, uh, is very important for companies. And staying there is really difficult. Don't get me wrong; these were very successful companies. You know, Nokia, Kodak, everything, but and Polaroid, it, and, and they were consistent. You know, don't again, don't get me wrong. But to stay on top of your game for as long as possible takes innovation, takes change, and these companies, of course, did not have that. So here are a couple of, uh, of course, the newer logos of these companies and, of course, Polaroid. And let's move on now. So these companies have kind of disappeared. And therefore, why innovate? Well, what would happen if you don't? Innovation is not a choice. It's a necessity. And I think we all uh, agree on that because it is a necessity. You will not be able uh, to 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 progress as a company if you don't if you don't continue to think of new ideas and this is kind of like 
what com most companies are doing now, you know, even uh, Apple iPhone or Amazon is coming up with new things. Apple now is getting into services uh, in terms of like, you know, what Netflix is doing. Amazon has got into uh, cloud services. They got into supermarkets. Uh, every company, you know, Coca-Cola is trying to find new, new taste. Uh, they're, they're actually offering something in Greece with Stevia, which was the kind of like the, the extension of Coca-Cola life, which was it had a green label. They always tried to find new products and new tastes and new ideas, even though we all think, okay, Coca-Cola, 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 you know, why should they innovate? They have to innovate. People get tired. People, there's a lot of competition. I'll tell you the reasons they're coming up. So uh, let's see. Yes, the reasons are right here. So basically the trends affecting us are pushing us. They're pushing and pulling us into innovation is, of course, increased communication. You know, we can we can do things better, faster, cheaper these days, as as uh, Tom Malone says in, in, in one of his videos. I just remembered uh, from you know, on, on the future of work. But we're communicating a lot easier. And this brings us a lot of, you know, new ideas in terms of innovation and 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 this doesn't have to be in communication or in a communication area but the fact that we can communicate can bring us a lot of ideas on working with other people from around the world crowdsourcing is part of this so communication has kind of pushed us or pulled us into this more ideas you know more if facebook is there you know twitter we have all these ideas to youtube we watch videos and the fact that we can communicate and interact is pushing us to do more things and that's why the trends have been you know really steep in the past years we're going faster than ever people want new stuff all the time the intense global competition another amazing point you know we're, 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 we're competing internationally I don't know a lot of companies when I travel around the world for PwC Academy uh, like the academies around the world it's amazing I go like 40 50 countries and uh, you know there's a lot of competition and, and most of it is international not many you know there, there are not many many small companies that are local these days even if you have a small let's say training company somewhere you're competing internationally you're probably offering something that is international in nature so a lot of global competition out there global ideas so if you if you kind of correlate that the communication with the competition and the environment uh, is, is forcing us to think differently uh, to come up with ideas and of course because the competitor is doing something they're pushing us to do something so you know at PwC if something you know if something happens at Deloitte which is interesting you know we look at it as well if um, I'm sure Vodafone looks at other telecom companies Telenor for example a very big telecom company I know many of you are, are, are listening now from 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 different parts of the world and you know Telenor is present in a number of areas they actually became a bank you know you have a telecom company becoming a bank and I'll talk about that later but it's interesting to see how things how things change and the reason by the way since I'm saying that is uh, because Telenor or wanted to get into the banking industry is because we're using our phone uh, as for, for almost everything so basically payment systems you know should you know would be probably done by by phones and that's why of course a, a telecom company it made some sense for them to extend their uh, their reach into a different area different industry increased transparency that's kind of linked with communication we can see things you know, every time you if, if I, I just said like 10 15 different things in terms of companies like Sappos or Amazon and then you know talking about cloud services you can just google these things and find them out so we the increase transparency has pushed people to know more to learn more maybe maybe there's there's too much that's why we have this big data issue but if you can actually make sense of this transparency and make sense and, and, and try to see what's reliable and what's more valid this big data could actually be turned into analytics you can make sense of something and say, okay, this is interesting. I just did some analysis. Most of my customers are, are female and they come from this region. So maybe I can market there and probably, you know, focus more on female customers. So the data can give us patterns. So this transparency, openness, communication, competition can give us more data and the data needs to be scrutinized to give us some sort of analysis. And of course, the final point is constant change uh, and that's why change and change management has been very, 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 very important for companies. I do a lot of trainings in this area uh, for PwC and other companies and it's very interesting to see how, how change is one of the top two or three topics that that we that we deliver because people have to be adaptive to change to be ready for change because new innovation brings change and therefore change needs to be you know embraced so these are kind of like the trends i want to summarize them for you so what have we done up to here and i have a summary at the end so don't worry if you're if you're if you know if you're lost in terms of you know what and i'm taking or not not, not taking notes 
uh, the, the, the issue of, of innovation is crucial. It's, it's imperative for companies to do, to do well uh, and succeed in a sustainable fashion, which means coming up with new ideas all the time. It's very important uh, to, to remind ourselves of what happened to companies that failed to innovate. And that's why I showed you the logos of the previous companies. And of course, there's a lot of trends which are kind of pushing us and getting us to, to think about innovation a little bit more. We all know that you know increased competition forces companies to think differently, to come up with the new idea, the next big thing, and that pushes the other company. So we are living in this really fast-moving era, and I know you know that, and I'm you're probably uh, you know probably probably heard it in, in a number of uh, webinars or, or trainings you've done. But it's true. We have to remind ourselves the pace of change is forcing this in in in, in a certain way. So. Let me go forward and hope the sound is good. If I don't listen to anyone, it means that we're okay in terms of the sound and everything else. As I told you, I promised I will give you some time. We've done 15 minutes only, so let me just, I'll give you some time, about 15 minutes, to maybe ask for some questions if you want, or maybe if you want me, I can go all the way and then we can do that at the end. So this is a very nice quote. Let me read it for you to, to, to kind of like show you or, or to kind of see how it sounds. The surplus society has a surplus of similar companies employing similar people with a similar educational with similar educational backgrounds, working in similar jobs, coming up with similar ideas, producing similar things with similar price and quality. This is quite true. And this is why you know we talk about disruption, change, trying to do things differently. And it's not only the classic gadget companies. So a lot of companies that do things differently. IKEA does things differently. Uh, you have companies like, as we said, Amazon and retail. You know, Walmart is trying to do things differently now. They're going. They're going, also going online. They purchase companies as well to 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 push more into uh, into the online uh, spectrum. Uh, companies that make applications and game. You know, they they tried, and everyone is trying to think differently to make a difference because in the older days and I think if you're not innovating you're probably thinking in a similar fashion uh, then that's one reason why you're not you're not innovating so try to avoid doing similar things try to think out of the box or as many say inside the box which I'll explain what I mean later on and trust me even though I am still in this 15 minutes a little bit more theoretical I will get to the practicalities and how these things work but I need to build a case on why it's important and I need to build a case to kind of convince you as much as possible I can't convince everyone uh, that innovation is imperative it's crucial it's the only way forward and that's why you hear a lot of it and that's why you probably wanted to attend this webinar so when we moving moving forward now these are the six six examples and I can come up I can make come up 10 or 15 that I thought of reminding you and I know you've probably seen this on Facebook or something and the people talk about it the people who made Skype were not in the in the telecommunications industry the people who made Airbnb were not in the hotel industry the people who made iPhone were not in the telecom company in, in the telecom industry they were actually a computer company yes it's related but nothing to do with with phones the people who made the Uber application were not taxi drivers. The people who made Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, the Wimpleforce brothers, and of course uh, his his former partner Severin uh, from 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 Brazil, they, they they were not in the I would say in the industry of of the internet and trying to communicate the way it turned out to be social media. Uh, but they started something to connect dormitories, if you remember the stories you know, from the movie. And then, of course, things happen. So the more you try, and the more the more things you know come up. But you have to try. Trying opens up new doors, and luck goes to those people who try things. And finally, Khan Academy, which is one of my favorite, because Sal Khan, who invented Khan Academy, was a person who was a hedge fund analyst in Boston, and he ended up changing the education industry. Even though he's an educated person, he had nothing to do with education. He wasn't working, let's say, in a university or being a professor or anything. He was just, you know, trying to send uh, nice little videos to his cousin Nandia that was actually taking exams and he ended up making Khan Academy because he was good at it. So I can go on and on with this and the whole point of telling you these things is just to show you that anyone can innovate in any industry and the reason this happens, it's quite interesting to tell you this, is because people who actually get into these things have no risk. We are usually saturated. So I'll give you an example. If I, for example, say something to uh, to someone in um, 
uh, at, at PwC, oh, we should do this, whatever. Usually, you know, sometimes, you know, corporates, a lot of procedures to, to politics, you know, being diplomatic, making sure, you know, things happen in the correct way because we're an audit firm. It's, it makes things very difficult. So people don't even get into it. Sometimes the culture of the company is a little bit more risk averse. So that, you know, that's why we're trying to build ideas for innovation. So maybe the company is not forcing you to think differently. But uh, if someone comes from outside, and just you know walks in and says, you know you know why why are you doing this webinar like this? Maybe you can do that. They have no risk in saying that. And sometimes the fact that they have no risk gives us the idea and say, interesting. I never thought about that because I'm saturated in what I do in many ways. We're all saturated because we do things in a certain way, and it takes some effort to really be open and take ideas from others. And that's why sharing is very important. And that's why you know most of these companies, by the way, not only these. But uh, a number of companies, uh, about 80% of them that, that, that actually have made it big are companies that you know, were not just done by one person. They shared, they had another uh, associate, they had partners, and they had ideas. The more you open it up, the more successful it becomes. The mini MBA that we offered PwC is a great example of that. Yes, okay, the, 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 the concept of it you know, came uh, when I was in Athens you know, teaching uh, many, many years ago, but it was only when you know, we, we talked about it with PwC, with Miras Molovic from, from Serbia. We got together and said, no, we can do this, we can do that. When you share, ideas get better. When you share, you may listen to something you never thought of. So anyway, making my point, these companies were not made by the industry experts. And I can go on. I'm sure you have a lot others. And please share them if you if you do. Let me move, move on. So basically, it's in the way we think. And I want, I want all of you after this webinar, maybe, uh, if possible, to get stimulated. And then that's, that's, you know, I'm not going to make you an expert in, in one hour. I never said that. And we do these, uh, these webinars to actually try to, you know, showcase what we can do. Uh, of course, offer value to everyone who's listening. We, we do it for free. Uh, and it's, but it's very important for you to get stimulated because, you know, sometimes you're waiting for something to push you a little bit. So I hope, I hope I'm part of that. So the shoe story, let me just remind you of a nice little story you probably heard of, but it's a great story. And I always, so I sometimes start with that in a class. I said, there's a guy from England, I think it was from Bata, the, the, the shoemaker, Bata. And the, he's, he, he tells his, uh, his, uh, his salesperson, go to Africa and check the market for shoes. And the guy went to Africa. And of course, the, the areas he picked, you know, uh, were not really, you know, uh, you know, very big retail stores with shoes. And the guy said, oh, you know, it's, it's not going to work there. Not many people, you know, buy shoes. They don't wear shoes in that area, whatever. And the guy said, really? Amazing market. So one guy didn't see any market. And the other guy saw a huge market. It's the way you see things. It's the half full, half empty glass of water. I see things always half full. There's people I talk to, they always see it half empty. So it's the way you think. And, as, and, and the next, the next uh, bullet there is the one that we use for the webinars. Well, it's not mine. It's a, it's a, it's a great quote by Robert Kiyosaki, uh, an amazing entrepreneur who wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He said, great opportunities are not seen with your eyes, but with your mind. The guy was in real estate. So when he saw a house, a hotel, land, you know, he thought about it. You know, what can I do here? He visioned it. He visioned the area. He, he, he saw it differently. He didn't just see you know, what he saw you know, you know, literally and you know, practically. So great opportunities. You got to think differently. Thinking like, remember the shoe story. You know, what, what, what can I do? Uh, what can I make out of this? You know, be positive. Be open. If you're always pushing yourself to be negative, you're not going to get anything done anyway. So that's very important. And of course, creative thinking. It's in the way we think. I like to be creative my, myself. I always see an opportunity. I have like on my desktop, I have a little file with ideas. It doesn't matter if I don't do them as we'll see later on. Quantity is better than quality when it comes to ideas because you need ideas. Then you screen them. Then you say, oh, I'm not going to do this one. Oh, this is a good one. And then after two or three months, you say, oh, remember, I, I remember I saw that. Maybe it's a good time now or I heard something. And you know, the puzzle comes together. It takes time to, 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 nurture, to nurture an idea. It takes time to listen, to get some feedback. And maybe you, you see something else that you know, gets that missing link uh, of your puzzle. So it is in the way we think if you really think about it. So what is innovation now? Let's, let's define it very quickly. I only have another 15, 16 slides to go just to give you a little feedback on, on how fast or slow we're not. We're not moving slow. We're, we're, we're quite okay on time. So what is innovation? I, it's inspiration or ideas being commercial or ideas that work. 
something that actually works. So you can't say, I have an innovative idea. You can't say that. You know, uh, in, in, in my book, if you say that, you know, you're, you're actually uh, you're actually, you know, prejudging something. It's it may not be innovation. You're you just have have an idea. But if your idea works and it could be a balloon on a desk, as we said, uh, that is innovation because now people are using the same technique and they are getting better onboarding like Zappos did. Even that simple balloon on a desk, which was not a new iPad or a new iPhone or maybe Amazon's you know, new, let's say, drone technology or a robot. It's nothing like that. It could be something very, very simple. So very, very simply, I know innovation is ideas that actually work or are implemented. You've done something with them and they are useful to someone. Of course, people want to commercialize most of the ideas. They want to, they want to make some money out of it. And of course, that is the, that would be the, the, the specific and then the most, uh, you know, important objective, but that doesn't mean that every that everything works. So let me go a bit further now to go into the theories. Uh, no, not yet. Creativity obstacles, I promised you that I will tell you. This is what comes out in my, in my classes. I, I, I want to give it to you. People don't have time. And I'll tell you why they don't, they don't have time. We don't have time because we have too many time wasters. We have like 15 ways to communicate, you know, Viber and Skype and uh, Messenger and Facebook and emails and, and, and WhatsApp. If you think about all these things, you know, it, it takes like a good hour to check everything. So <laughs> just give you an example and you know, the amount of time we spend on Facebook or everything else. Sometimes, you know, we spend too much time. We have to have a limit and everything. So time management is a creativity obstacle. Make sure you manage your time well. Second, procedures. Every company has too many procedures. I always hear this. The big companies, yes, they do. Now we have GDPR and now your procedures. I can't do this. I can't do that. You're kind of being restricted. I totally understand that. And I'm also part of a big organization like PwC, which, you know, it does restrict you in many cases, but it does give you a lot of scalability, a lot of opportunity. So look at the bright side of things. And of course, let, let, let's not make procedures be the problem. Ill support. What does that mean? It means that, for example, you're you're not getting support from anyone. And that that is important. It's called buy-in. You know, my idea. They didn't like it. You're not being supported by it. Not necessarily financially. It's not the issue. No trust. You know, maybe you don't trust the whole process. Maybe you don't you don't trust the system. You don't trust your company you work for in terms of taking the idea and doing something with it. And maybe you're not even brave enough. And that's another important point. Being not brave, you're kind of afraid. Okay. So these are these are obstacles that people that people have when they want to innovate. So which brings us exactly 30 minutes down the line. Now we have another 30 minutes for the theories. So competency or skill and strength based innovation. Let me explain that. And this is an important slide. My first theory that I want to kind of deliver or kind of explain is, and I'll give you examples, of course, lives I told you. This is actually based on skills. People sometimes make a mistake and they want to solve weaknesses they have, even as, as people, you know, as, as individuals. We, we should build on our strengths. Companies should build on their strengths. What are you good at? Extend it. When people come to my office and they say, you know, Dino, I, I want to leave my job. I want, I want to do something. I say, what are you good at? Typical question. And they always tell me, well, I'm not really good at this. I said, I didn't ask you that. I said, what are you good at? You know, it's, it's the same thing with us. We should find things that we are good at. And there's companies, to take it to a corporate level, that they're good at something. And a very good example, I have to use PwC as a first one. I have like three or four of them in my mind, but PwC is a good one. PwC started as an accounting company, okay, accounting, 100 years ago, you know, you know before the, the, the merger, the last merger. It was, you know, it's a very old company. So you have accounting. Then, then, then what happened? You became a, a, a tax consulting company. And then you did, let's say, auditing or the other way around. And then you said, oh, I have a big network. I'm going to give legal advice as well. And then you, gave, and then you did the advice, overall the advice, consulting. And then we got into the academy business. Why? We're extending our capabilities and being innovative at it. The PwC Academy concept is innovation on its own because we were the first company who had actually an academy business because we said, ah, oh, we're good at this. We got good people. We got a huge network. We can, we have scalability. You know, why not showcase what we can do? So that is extending our capability. Now you can do that at a personal level to find ideas. And I'm giving you practical examples of what happened in PwC. Let me move to a different example though. Amazon did the same thing. Amazon had a huge server. Give you a simple example that everyone can understand, even through a, a very simple webinar. You have you have a big server because you have like 
sorry, about, about a million customers or 200 million customers. I can't remember the, the, the exact number now. And these customers are going through a server because an online store like Amazon requires that. And they had so much space available in terms of the server that said, let's get into cloud. We can rent space. We have so much capability. And they made Amazon Web Services. That's the idea. I'm extending a capability I have. And they, they did the same thing with Amazon Fresh. What is Amazon Fresh? They're actually sending um, uh, groceries uh, on same day delivery because they were very good in delivery, the process, the whole thing. How can we extend this? Let's let's start to do this and let's start you know doing let's say same day delivery uh, of of groceries. So you're extending something that you are good at. That is that is that is a simple thing. Uh, Ikea. Yeah, IKEA is a, is, is a very great furniture shop. What, what, what are they doing now? They're extending the use of their furniture and they're making hotels. And when you check out, you can probably can buy something. Say, I like my bed. I want to buy the bed as well. That's extending a capability. One of my students once in, a, in an MBA course, I was teaching an MBA course uh, a few years ago, I can't remember, six, seven years ago. If you've been to IKEA, and I'm, I know I, we, have, we have an international audience here, and IKEA is quite big, so I, I think I'll, I'll risk the example. The I, IKEA has very nice hot dogs. So, so my student made a, made a whole uh, a whole case of IKEA making uh, the next, let's say, fast food uh, restaurant because they're very good in hot dogs. So, in a certain way, even though it's a funny example, what do you become good at? Try to extend that, and that could be the next idea. Now. I can I cannot facilitate a discussion now in only five minutes to tell you how to do that. We'd have to interact, but it can be done. And people cannot sometimes see what they're good at because they don't feel that they're good at it sometimes because that's what the customers think. So big companies, of course, get the feedback and it's easy for them. So what are you good at? Amazon is also very good in, in, in marketing, uh, as you know, because they were very good in getting the preferences and making recommendations, which Netflix did late, 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 later on on that. So you know, what are you good at? Marketing patterns and, of course, this data, if it's GDPR, uh, of course, compliant, could be used for other things. So find your strengths. I think you've got the idea of model number one. Start thinking this way and I'm quite sure you can come up with an idea. It could be a process, it could be a strength you have, uh, something you can use in a different way. Uh, for example, in training, if we have a great program going, we're trying, we, we may actually take that program and offer it and, and, and offer it on its own. For example, innovation. We, we do training uh, sessions for innovation, like a one or two day, two day course. Why? Because we, we had, we had we had put part of it into a whole program. So we're good at this. We're getting great feedback. Why don't we offer it on its own? So basically taking a strength and extending it. Maybe you can use some data as well because data analytics now is very crucial to do this. If you can find out something that you're good at, then you can extend that. That is the idea. So first theory to summarize, competency-based innovation. What are you good at? Try to extend it. And I'm sure you got some ideas while I was speaking. Second classic way to, in, to in, innovate, and this is something that you probably see in every innovation university or program, it's always problem. You find a problem and you solve it. And I know it sounds very simple. It's easier said than done. Yes, I know. But I, come, I, I usually do this in the program. I say, okay, let's think now in groups, in, in, in the session. You can imagine 20, 25 people in a room. You can do this in your companies if you like training and you're, and you, and you're doing it as well. And ask them, to write on flip charts, you know, what are you, what are, what are our problems? What's going on with our customers? What don't they like? What's missing? Find the problem and solve it. But you're being pushed. Someone has to facilitate to find a solution for it. Okay, and we and you should not discard, uh, of course, ideas very 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 fast. So basically, question number one. For example, what is causing a problem to my end user? What's going on? What does what, what does my customer uh, think about me? You know what, what's what's wrong about the product or the service that I'm offering? What services can be customized? Customization is huge these days. People love to to have something that it's only theirs. It's unique. For example, uh, if you remember, Louis Vuitton is a great company, and they put initials on the bags so women can have a Louis Vuitton bag and have their initials on it. That's more customized. You can you can buy a car the exact way you want it. You know, customization is innovation. So you can actually go to the Volvo website and you know press the color, press uh, you know if you, if you want this gearbox, these types of tires. You can click click click. You make it on. That was customization. How can you use customization? I actually know a friend of mine who's offering olive oil that's customized in a customized box with your name on it. So I mean, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that you can do 
if you think about customization. So maybe think of this, well, it could be a problem because people want it to be customized. Maybe your process is a problem. Maybe your process is too difficult. Maybe maybe it's too lengthy and you want to change it. Uh, I, when I talk about process, I always remember the, the movie uh, the founder, if you if you ever heard of it, it's a movie that you know uh, that was based on the McDonald's story, and there's a couple of great scenes there, among others. It's a good, it's a good movie. Uh, Michael Keaton is the is the actor, and he he's he's a protagonist, and he talks about uh, how not he the McDonald's brothers when they tried to make their first hamburger shop, they went to a tennis court, and they actually drew with chalk. Through the, because there was no software at the time, it's 1952, if I remember well, and they had chalk and they 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 actually you know made the boxes on where the fries would be and where the burgers would be and how the people would be walking into in, into the area. He actually did you know what we what we we would do now in in a software like Visio or something or maybe you know the design you know our architecture or something would design that. He did it you know with with a chalk and he changed the whole process and made fast food. And, and that was innovative because people would take like 30 minutes to, to make food and he made it in like five or 10 minutes. So the process solved the issue of taking time. So what was the problem? Taking too much time. How can we solve it? Change the process. And the, one of my favorite examples, I think you'll you like this one, is Dick Fosbury. And you all know Dick Fosbury. You don't know you know him, for those of you who don't remember the name. Fosbury was the guy who won the 1968 Olympics in the high jump. And if you remember, the high jump at the time was like, you know, two meters and, and, and 10 centimeters. And, and people were, were jumping uh, using their, you know, a, a forward way of jump, you know, with, with our head in front or doing the scissors kick. And this guy, this guy ran and he, he started to, to jump with his back first. And that's now the, 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 the most uh, used way to jump in the high jump in, in, in athletics. And how did he come up with it? Because he couldn't make the Olympic team. He had to find a way to make the Olympic team. And he actually uh, jumped in that way. And then now everyone in the world after 1968, everyone, I, I haven't seen anyone in the past 20, 30 years jumping in a different way, even 40 years. So he had a problem and he solved it. Problems force us to do something. And that's why sometimes you may have innovation. There's a lot of examples here I sometimes use uh, in classes. I don't want to, to give away all these. I won't have the time. But uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a microwave that actually, instead of doing uh, doing beep, 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 which is actually annoying sometimes when the food is ready, you can, it actually plays music for you. So that's, that's, that's a problem. You know, People don't like beep, 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 and you put music. But they were bold in doing it because people sometimes talk too much and they don't get things done. So theory number one, if you remember, Competencies-based innovation. Theory number two, find a problem, solve it, push yourself. And if you do share discussions with people in a, in a meeting room and doing a very effective meeting, because you know meetings are not always effective, then you will be able to find a solution. Trust me on that, because it always happens in a classroom. You know, We may not do implement them, but we do come up with them. So basically, before I go to the last theory and also come to the questions at the end, which I have for you, in over, in the last one is, is really, I think, truly amazing. So let's, let, let me just, you know, say this slide first and then move in. So innovation is not only IT related. It's not only, it doesn't have to be really creative in that sense. It doesn't have to be a revolution. Oh my God, you know, it, it, this is not like uh, the new iPhone or whatever. It, it could be something that really just works. And, uh, you do, and, and you can optimize costs. You can make a different process. You never know. And then, of course, the more you build on it, it becomes better and better. You know, the internet wasn't what it is now. Uh, Tim Bernard's lead, you know, didn't come up with the internet when it came out. I think it was, a, it was actually used for the, uh, for the ARPANET, which was actually a military project in the, in the USA. And he, you know, and then, of course, after one, 10, 20, 30 years, he started to figure out that you know people can use it globally, you know, through 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 international connectivity and everything. So you know the internet wasn't it didn't come out like that. You know you you take takes time to to nurture. And the amazing quote here is is that uh, that eighty percent of innovations uh, of those that are being researched from 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 a quote I have here were sparked by someone whose primary expertise was outside the field. And that's why, you know, Harvard is not coming up with innovation. Sal Khan did, because Harvard is too rigid. It's, it's, it's such a great institution, don't, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's very rare that you will see the established people uh, getting into something, you know, risky and everything. They could, don't get me wrong, but it's not the norm. The norm usually comes from some, you know, crazy person or someone who actually takes takes uh, uh, the initiative and, and, and risks things. And that's how innovation usually happens. So 
Now, the third and final theory, which I'm very proud to kind of present, it's a great theory called the systematic inventive thinking. It has five sub areas, but in a, in a, in a one hour webinar, I will have to be very specific for you and maybe impress you with what I have in, in mind. Uh, but, you know, let me let me let me tell you what, what, what I mean now. If this is based on the fact that innovation follows a set of patterns that can be reapplied to any product, service, or process, but I have to explain that. I know it sounds very scientific for you. So let me just give you some examples. The whole idea is to think about subtraction. Now, what is subtraction? It's eliminating something, correct? Think about this, subtracting something, minus, okay? So I'm gonna prove to you that in a number of cases around the world, we had companies that actually subtracted something and they did amazingly well. Let me explain what I mean. Look at these logos here, okay? The contact lenses, people subtracted the whole glass lens, sorry, the, the, um, the glasses themselves, and they, they made contact lenses with the, with the theory of subtraction. Instant soup, they subtracted a vital element of the soup, which is water, they dried it, and they made soup. Again, they subtracted something. The ATM, they subtracted uh, the bank teller and they made a machine for it. Even though it's old in the old days, it is considered subtraction. IKEA uh, stopped the, 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 the whole assembly line. You make it on your own. Said, I'm not going to make it for you. Good luck. Here it is. Here are the boxes and go make it. Of course, you can hire someone to do it, which means that they make more money, but they actually eliminated the whole issue of making it for you. So think about subtraction. I have more amazing examples for you, and you'll see where I'm getting at. So what about this? The mini MBA subtracted, you know, what we did, uh, which is an, an, now it's an awarded program. We subtracted a vital element of, 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 the, of, the, of an MBA, which is the degree. We, there, there's a corporate giving the degree, the certificate, which is PwC. And we are number one in what we do. You know, we're not a university, but we're number one in what we do. So basically, we eliminated the vital element and we made a program in a service. Contact lenses, we talked about ATM. Amazon Go is a supermarket where you can actually shop with your phone. There's no cash register. You just take your phone and everything just, you know, barcode, beep, everything's there. Instant soup. So, that, of course, we said that, you know, we replaced the water. IKEA, DVD. The, the DVD slimline by Philips actually has no knobs on it. It was so slim, it got an award for its design. And the reason is because people, people were using a remote control. They eliminated a vital element of it and it came up with a new product. See where I'm getting at now. Sony Walkman, my favorite, because I, I was growing, when I was growing up, everyone wanted a Sony Walkman, uh, you know, with the, with, with, with the tape and everything. So Sony eliminated the speaker. They took it away and they said, I'll show you the theory coming up, but just listen to these stories now. Sony eliminated the speaker. They, they subtracted it and they made something that's personal in terms of you just put your headphones and you have it. So, and, and, and someone before that would think, you know, how could it work with no speaker? What do you mean? No, no, well, that's a new product. And it was an innovation at the time. Motorola Mango was a, was a phone that actually deleted one of the vital elements of a phone, making calls. Who would want it? Children. Big hit. Fabrice Freshener, which was actually uh, uh, taking a detergent, taking away the chemicals that clean and actually turning it into something that could, you know, refresh your curtains or the carpet. It doesn't clean, but it smells very good. And they made a new, pro a new product. Why? How? By eliminating something vital. The, the Wi-Fi, the, 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 you know, there's no cable. <laughs> Elimination of vital element. The uh, Wii, if you remember, the, no, there's no joystick. When you play, you, you actually, you know, you, they, they just, they eliminated the joystick. So basically, this is my last example, but I think we're seeing, it's very interesting to see this theory. Can you think of something that you can, you can, you can take a service or product, maybe in your company, or even a procedure in your company, or something you do, uh, and you can start eliminating a vital element and then see what you have and ask if anyone wants it. Let me show you how, how that looks on the theory. Here it is. So you take an existing situation and you think about a thinking tool. Subtraction is one of them. I can't cover all of them. It's only one hour and we've covered 45 minutes already and I wanna leave some time for questions if I can. So basically you subtract a vital element. You make a virtual product. Let's for example, a Walkman. So you have a Walkman and you say, would anyone want something like that with no speaker? You have to say, should we do it? You know, would anybody want it? Maybe we can, you know, maybe we can put headphones. Can we adapt it? And then there's an idea. So basically you go over four or five basic steps here and we do it in class. 
I can show you how it works. I can deliver it to you if you follow one of our classes or whatever, but I'm sure you can read about this. You, you actually subtract a vital element and then you actually say, what do I have? What do I even want this? Can we adapt it? And then there's an idea. So think about it. And my, my best example is actually the, the, the Fabrice freshener because uh, they, they took subtraction. They made a virtual product by taking away the detergent part that cleaned the clothes. And they said, you know, would anyone want something that smells good uh, but doesn't clean clothes? And then someone said, okay, if we put a sprayer at it, you know, we can actually use it for curtains and carpets where you know that you can't clean every, every, every you know, too, too often. And they checked feasibility, challenges, they adapted it, and then there's a product. So this could be taught. And that's why we're quite excited uh, when we thought about this innovation topic as a webinar. Because, you know, you know, you could deliver something very quickly. I'm sure the people that are professionals listening to this are getting it. It's only five minutes, but you get the logic and, you, and, you, and you're stimulated to think about it a little bit more. So basically, this is the subtraction uh, theory. So I, I told you three theories, basically. Okay. One is competencies-based innovation. The second one is problem to solution. Very simple, very, it sounds theoretical, but it's not. And thirdly, you can use systematic inventive thinking. And one sub area is subtraction. Okay, so eliminating a vital element to come up with possibly an idea and a new product or service. That's thinking inside the box, not outside. So towards innovation, a few questions that may spur ideas. I have three questions for you, but I want to start thinking about it. I want to stimulate you. So for example, you can imagine me having a presentation and coming into a room and saying, if you could only work on one project for a year to transform the business, what would it be and why? And if you can answer that, you, the idea would be focus on that because there's probably something very important there that you can probably, you know, maybe innovate. Another good question for you. So if you only work on one project for a year to transform the business, what would it be and why? Second question, what can we offer for free that no one else does? This was the whole concept of the freemium strategy. And you have companies that are offering applications, downloads, you can do this for free, and maybe you can get a competitive advantage uh, because no one else is offering it. And offering something for free doesn't mean, of course, that you're losing money. You're creating awareness, marketing awareness, and then, of course, you can also add on uh, extras to, to, to make it freemium, which means the combination of free and premium services. So just think about that. Maybe there's innovation there. What can I do, can offer free that no one else does? And the third one is uh, here. This is a very interesting one, which, of course, there's not too many examples, but there are examples. How can our services be turned into physical products? How can our products be turned into a service? So to give you a great example that I'm working on right now, even when I was thinking about this, I'm actually making a board game for the mini MBA. People can have, you know, can play like Monopoly and learn business. It's difficult to come up with the questions, the sequence, everything else, but I'm gonna make a service come a product. So think about that, just giving you an idea that I'm working on right now. So how can we turn it into a service or the opposite, a service into a product, okay? That's the idea. So coming to a close slowly, if you have about three more slides and then we can go for questions and leave the last five or 10 minutes. So quantity over quality, I really believe that. You gotta have ideas. You have to think about ideas all the time. As I told you, I have a little bucket list that I, that I, that I write them down and they're, they're, they're on my desktop and then I delete them uh, or I can always keep them because you never know when you, when, when you will use it or when some connectivity will happen and it will, things start to make sense. So this, this is one of the few times where the word quantity is better than quality, but I think you understand the way I'm saying it. Another point is that we say that companies should reward success, celebrate failure, and punish inaction. And the reason I kind of close the innovation courses I do with that, and I want to kind of explain to the, to the companies I, I do work for, is that, you know, it's always important to reward people for successes. It's also very, very important, probably more important, to celebrate someone who tried something, but they failed. And finally, you know, people should not... Punish is a very harsh word. I'm not going to use that, but it's the expression. Punish in action, meaning, you know, of course, people, people should be kind of penalized in one way if they don't do anything because everyone has to support. Everyone has to find a way to, to build more ideas, uh, help the company grow, and that's the idea going forward. So 
this this is the ongoing summary, so I hope you understood the structure. And, and, and if you're not, if you didn't, and let me remind you. Number one, you know, we talked about innovation. We talked about innovation being a requirement, a necessity. You can't avoid, of course, uh, being innovative because it's the only way forward. And I, I try to give you some examples of older companies that did that failed. Innovation can come from anyone and anywhere. So don't be afraid to, to come up with something. Don't be afraid to say something. Don't be afraid to share your idea because someone else may say something that sounds stupid but may be actually the solution to what you've been looking for uh, remember that you can you can you can think first of all based on capability so you can you can use capabilities based innovation people are good at something companies are good at something so why not extend that second the role of problems in innovation sometimes you can use problems uh, to find solutions and I give you some examples in real life like Fosbury flop or even the microwave or you know, a lot, lot of issues that, that have happened that made things better even the iPhone was based on a problem if you if you read about what Steve Jobs had said about the the quarter keyboard he wanted people to have a touch screen and because that's a problem he said let's make it simpler let's make it better and he found a way and he pushes people sometimes even harshly to find a solution but he did uh, of course the third theory was based on systematic inventive thinking which is a very nice theory have a look at it learn you know search for it it has to do with sub sub subtraction I can also talk about multiplication maybe in a, in a different in a different uh, webinar it's a different type of process but I think you you got the idea of using subtraction and then seeing what remains seeing if you can adapt things would anyone need it and of course get get, get the idea going something extra that I did not talk about but I, I promised myself to put it in the summary because it's a huge topic uh, that has to do with companies culture is crucial culture of a company is what actually triggers innovation so make sure you 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 know if you are one of the leaders if you're if, if you're listening to me and you're a leader in your company make sure you curate and nurture that type of culture where people are not afraid to say their ideas and share them and that is you know creating an infrastructure to, to, to towards innovation which will help your people come up with ideas it's all about ideas going forward all the time and if people are not are not giving ideas then it's very difficult of course to have the competitive advantage be curious uh, and that's when when, when when things happen usually uh, and finally I love this slide this is a classic slide that we always uh, talk about even though uh, you probably have maybe seen it somewhere it's uh, take action not notes uh, you know one of the inspirational points I wanted to share with you is you know do something uh, instead of sometimes we, we talk a lot we tend to talk a lot uh, and, 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 we're, and we're not implementing so it's always great to say oh, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna try something it doesn't have to be company oriented I know I'm speaking to you as individuals uh, many of you come of course from, from, from big multinational firms or smaller firms that doesn't really matter but you know, take action let's not talk too much let's do things it's, it's very important to, to do things not just talk about them I think that's where companies fail uh, people are very good and uh, consultants are very good and in terms of coming up with ideas but we fail sometimes to implement we don't do what we need to do we like talking about them and making a decision but when it comes to getting things done we were a bit slower and things don't happen so let's leave it there in terms of the uh, in terms of the um, uh, the webinar that's exactly 55 or 56 minutes uh, so I think I was right on time and I want to leave the next five minutes for any questions I know I took a lot of time so I I, I wanted to make sure that I cover everything but of course we can extend you can give us feedback and also uh, you can come up with any questions so the floor is yours if Kasha can hear me maybe we can we can have a, the host help us out with any questions yes thank you Dino, so much for this I took some notes Okay, I'll translate them into action. Excellent. In the future, in the near future. So, uh, there's quite a few of us. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, something you would like to share, maybe an idea or, you know, some from your experience that you, you've been innovative, you've created something, uh, please do so. We are happy to hear you, hear from you. Or even a question if they have. Sure. I think you can unmute yourselves. That would be the. Hey, Dino. Can you? Hello. Hello. Yes, we can. Hey, I'm Alex. So you talked about the change management that you no, know, it's trending nowadays. Yep. Um, tell us a bit how we can we could make it easier for our colleagues to actually accept change. 
Well, basically, uh, everything for change very quickly. It's a different topic, but I, I, I would be very happy to cover a few points. It comes from the top. If the people on the top that are leading are not change oriented or they are not, you know, adaptive to change, uh, they they have to show that things are happening with training, with edu educating people on the new changes. They have to be open in meetings to always embrace change. It always comes from the top. Talk about governance, talk about change management, setting the tone at the top. Nothing's going to happen in innovation, change, or whatever you want to call it if the people that are leading are not open. Remember that. So a very quick, quick answer is, of course, and, and being a trainer myself and a, and, a, and a consultant, active consultant, I would I would start with training. And that's why, you know, companies have a one or two day session on, you know, bringing in some animators from outside, let's say the company, because that has to also come from outside. It's not easy to say, oh, OK, I'm Dino. I work for the same company and now listen to me, you know, for change, because you 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 tend to uh, to think about Dino as that Dino is in the company. You want someone from outside. It's got to be a good balance between that. So the quick question is setting the tone at the top of, for for change, openness, understanding, and then educate people. The education part is very tricky. It, it cannot be done ad hoc with one session. It's got to be a program, and that's where we work with HR people and we start to help them to do one or two day courses, you know, covering a lot of ground with a number of people inside the company. So it's it's a it's a bit wide in terms of a, of an answer, but uh, that's what I can do for now. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. It actually covered one essential thing. Um, I was actually talking about changing changes in startups, and yep. uh, let's say the let's say the top uh, stakeholders are change oriented. But um, basically, what you're saying is they need to support us with actually training uh, yep. to. Uh, be yep. able to you know change our uh, yep. way of yep. thinking and accept it and yep. uh, yeah thanks a lot for those yeah. uh, my pleasure yeah. any other question okay so I'm not sure we have any more questions but anyway if, if even if we don't all of you will uh, have a getting a We'll receive a copy of, of my book. It's quite a fun book, I think, uh, and I, I've sent it over. All of you will probably receive it uh, by email, download it, and uh, I'm sure we'll have the time to do more of these webinars. So please sign up, and maybe we can we can uh, invite you to another one. I have, there's a number of topics that, that I cover personally, but also the whole team is amazing, and you can get a glimpse of what we do. Uh, even though, as you understand, if we had innovation in a classroom for you know for a couple of days, you can imagine how much inter, you know in, interaction, what happens in the cloud, the vibe, the stimulation, the videos, you know, coming up with ideas. You know, people leave and they they, they just they just feel great. Uh, and that's something we're missing in, in the world. It's a very difficult society uh, globally, difficult times we're living in, and we always have to be stimulated. So, you know, coming that, back to that last point, being an educator above all, I, I, want, I really want to feel that I stimulated some of you to start something tomorrow and say, hey, I'm going to do that. You know, Dino pushed me to do that, and that's all we need. If, if I did that, then I think I've, I accomplished what I had in mind today. So thank you.